The delivery of healthcare to poor people in the most re remote regions of the world ultimately matters because we are all connected. And as we just discussed in, you know, when we were talking about the ethics of responding to global pandemics, I think that is a very classic example of how what happens in, in, in poorer countries and the ability to access healthcare might affect actually the health of people in the West. So if you think about influenza pandemics, one of the reasons that actually, one of the things that is fueling the increase in the occurrence of outbreaks is the close proximity of people and animals. So in the farming communities, for instance, either in Cambodia or in China, people are living much closer to pigs and poultry, which is allowing the circulation of the virus so that you, you, know, you, you have strains that, are, that have pandemic potential emerging. And obviously, the, the fact that that person in that particular village in Cambodia does not, um, you know, they are living in this environment that is permissive to uh, viruses with pandemic potential arising. And whether, if that happens, whether those communities are actually protected, it, it determines whether, you know, the, the pandemic might spread and, and, and reach Europe or the US in, in, in wealthier communities. So I think people should be very concerned and should care a lot to what happens to, to, to remote communities because if the infrastructure doesn't exist, and um, there is underinvestment in those communities, it means that if there is a pandemic if it, or if there is an outbreak such as Ebola, it's more likely to spread beyond that particular community because you don't have the infrastructure to respond adequately to prevent a global, uh, you know, a broader impact. I think um, it will shape uh, biotechnology by, you know, it's it's very you know the, the the it's very nature the fact that it's it's a cross generational sort of fertilization of ideas. You have well established leaders in the in the in the biotechnology in the pharmaceutical industry who are working at the cutting edge of this, and you have young leaders who are aspiring to go into those community into those. Uh, into the biotechnology industry who are trying to decide where to go with their, in their future, how uh, to move their career forward. So I think it's a very important thing for, to have that discussion of what, what is possible, what is out there, what are the possible options that they con can consider, and what are the most pressing challenges that they could focus their talents and energy on. I think the largest gap is underinvestment in diseases that, are, that affect particularly poor people uh, or in areas where diseases don't necessarily um, you know, bring a lot of revenue for, for companies. And so you know, the decision making tends to, in what to invest in, tend to be more focused on trying to put money in areas that generates the largest amount of revenue.